As a film student here, you have to access multiple types of DSLRs. Don't worry yourself too much with the model numbers, as they all function in the same way. DSLR bodies and lenses can be found inside Mr. Black's and Mr. Lenzer's office, on a bookshelf to the right of the entry. Batteries and chargers are plugged into the wall outlets beside the bookshelf. Camera bags for the cameras are found beside the wall outlets. SD cards for the cameras can be found within Mr. Black's desk, but be sure to ask for permission before looking for these. Now, I wanted to show you how to properly handle the cameras. Firstly, you will notice that the body of the camera is not connected to the lens of the camera. Before using the camera, you must apply a lens. First, choose which lens you want to use. Notice the numbers on the lens. The lens are measured in millimeters. The higher the number, the farther the lens will zoom. Be aware that lenses with larger zooms may have a not so short minimum zoom. So if you want a wide angle shot, it may be in your best interest to choose a smaller lens. Try not to leave the body's internals exposed for an extended period of time as dust may enter the viewfinder. To attach the lens, make sure to align the white dot on the lens with the white dot on the body, then turn to the right to lock it. To detach the lens, simply press the button located on the side of the lens on the body of the camera and twist in the opposite direction of which it was attached. When using the camera, always put the strap either around your shoulder or neck to ensure that if you drop the camera, it won't break by hitting the floor. Make sure to always cover the lens and body once usage is complete and return them to their proper housing locations. First, you should be aware that in order to shoot with a DSLR, an SD card must be inside the camera. The SD card slot can be found on the right side of the camera. The easiest way to import footage onto the computer is to physically remove the SD card from the camera and place it into the SD card port in the Mac. You can also directly import files from the SD card straight into Final Cut or iMovie. Make sure to remove the SD card from the computer once import is complete. There are many buttons on the outside of the DSLR. We're going to go through the important buttons, and I will describe what each one does. Starting on the top of the body, you will notice a little slit by the built-in flash. This is used to connect shotgun mics to your camera. On the right side of the top, you have your on switch, your pictures button, and your recording button, which is the red one. The info button will change the display on the LCD screen. This does not impact the filming itself but may be useful depending upon what you want to see as you shoot. It rotates between in-camera settings, film recording settings, and mic levels, a clear screen, and a divider screen to set up shots on the rule of thirds. Now, you will notice a rotation wheel on the top of the camera. This is a very useful tool to change the shot you desire. On top of the camera, you will see the effect wheel. There is the auto button, located on the side of the lens. This is the main mode used for shooting. It automatically focuses on your main point and sets the exposure based on your target. Some other modes you can use are M, A, S, and P. They may vary per camera, but the basic understanding of each are the same. M stands for manual, the most versatile of all modes, as it allows for complete control of the camera. The next is A. Aperture can be used for pictures and videos such as interviews to blur the background and focus on your target. S represents shutter priority. Shutter priority means you can control the speed of the shutter. P represents program mode. Think of it as automatic plus. However, when you get more advanced, you can use the other modes, such as the no flash mode, portrait used for interviews and photos of people, landscape, which I prefer to use outside because it brightens the colors, Child mode is used for when you want to take silent photos without shutter sounds. Sports mode, which is used for motion. And lastly, close-up, for any close-up and extreme close-up shots. The final buttons that you will have to concern yourself with is the menu button, which will take you to the internal settings of the camera, the playback button, which will allow you to review or delete filmed footage, and the trash button, which you can press while in playback to delete footage. I should also mention that on the left side of the camera can be found the audio jack, 
as well as a mini HDMI and other camera hookups. The battery can be inserted at the bottom of the camera. Focusing is a simple but extremely powerful tool used by filmmakers everywhere. Properly being able to focus your camera will not only give it the crisp shot that you desire, but it can control where your audience looks on the screening, giving greater control over your on-screen composition. Focusing on the DSLRs is simple. First, there is automatic focus. Ensure that the button on the side of the lens is switched to automatic. To focus, lightly press down the large button on the right side of the body, the same one used to take pictures. Do not press hard, lightly press the button. You will notice that in the eyepiece, the squares will light up red. This means the camera is focusing on contrasting detail on whatever you are pointing at. When filming, the focusing will be done simply in the LCD screen instead of the viewfinder. You can switch the focus to manual if you're having trouble with focusing the camera on your target. While looking through the viewfinder, rotate the ring on the lens to adjust the focus. However, you should use autofocus when filming and shooting. After watching this video, you should be able to successfully operate a DSLR camera. Still have some questions? Please feel free to ask Mr. Black or Mr. Linzer or even another media student.